and a chaotic start we've had. Sorry for the late start today, but this will be really exciting. We have a special guest in the studio today that's going to paint with me. What am I looking at? Oh, I'm looking at you. You can look at any three here. Oh, good. So this is our very special guest, Emmy Fuller. She is an author and a painter, and she's agreed to come in and paint with me today. And we're going to ask her a lot of crazy questions, and she's going to try to paint while doing that, which is always exciting. Oh. And then we have a oh. live studio audience with her very handsome husband, Keith, over there. So he's hanging out on the, on the out, on, what is it called, the wings. He's in the wings of the, of the studio. So welcome. Welcome. Welcome back. Thank so you. So do we call you Emmy or Margaret or Maggie? Maggie. Maggie. Yeah. Okay, so you we're going to call you Maggie. Call Maggie. Oh, I keep calling you Maggie. Oh, but. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do some painting today, and then we're going to find out what your background is, right? And where you came from and all that. It'll be fun. Yeah, keep the question specific, please. Don't ask me to think. That one of the we, we like we like philosophical questions oh, while I you're like trying to focus yeah, on it. I, I try to do that. So I we, don't think when I do this, so you have to be very specific. No, oh, you don't think? That's interesting. So already we've gotten into process. How we do process? Yeah. yeah. If I had to think, I'd go right wrong. So what? What do you? How do you get started? Then? Open get started? up this gesso right here. You I got, got some gesso. So. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna use random. I'm, I'm going to start with some random paint today that's separated in here. And of course, my lovely wife, Kristen, behind the many, very many uh, technological things today because we, we had new cameras and new lights. The new lights are working. <laughs> yes, actually, I need to make a huge difference. But we couldn't get the new big camera working quite right. So. You're going to be stuck with the phones and the webcam and stuff. But we're excited by that. And so. I already spilled on the table. That's what that's for. <laughs> so she's doing some mark making almost with your gesso. That's pretty good. Yeah, well, I'm making my base. I'm bringing some blue in. Oh. So you mixed a little blue in with that? No, not yet. Not yet. Oh, you're going to? Not yet. It's just to pan. I have like a little it. palette here, we'll let it load up. That's my random start right there. I always like, I, I get kind of crazy, You're I just so kind fast. of gesture with. You're fast, I'm not that quick. So, you can go, let's see here. Thank you. So I did a sketch, a series of sketches. Yeah. Months ago, to prepare for the art fairs, which is where I met you. Oh yeah, at the, we were at Park Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in, that was in Duluth, Minnesota. Fantastic place. We're still in Duluth. Yeah. Although I am not from Duluth, I am from beautiful Montevideo, Minnesota, out in the prairie. Nice. Yeah. Oh, prairie. That's actual prairie. I, oh, I haven't yes. been there yet, so. It's gorgeous. Yes. Well, we're hoping that you will show up here in our uh, fall art crawl last weekend in September for two days. In that October. would be so fun. Take yeah, a tour. Yeah, if you could. Do you think there's still color at that time? Oh, gosh, yes. In, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a whole setting up for fall. It'll, it'll be beautiful. It's it'll probably be done here because <laughs> we're at the bottom of the stage. But yeah. yeah. Interesting. And then, um, so you let me ask you though, did you start out as an artist? Were you an artist, a painter, or did you well, kind of I fall think, into painting? I, well, I think I was born a painter. Uh, if I look around the relatives that I actually found. Painters in there. My mother was certainly an artist, um, wow. but not practicing. But I, you know, it's an inheritance. It's not like I woke up a dream this morning. <laughs> um, I don't know if any, but there's a few of them out there that are definitely genius. Right. Well, there is. I'll tell you, there's a woman in Montevideo who. Uh, oh really? Is literally a savant. She can make a mural by looking at the space and go. Wow. And they're beautiful. Um, yeah, so what do you got going on back there, Kristen? I feel like I'm Mr. Bean today. <laughs> I can guarantee you don't look like Mr. Bean. <laughs> so that's a good he's thing. A, he's a body comedy guy from Britain. Uh, oh, okay. I'm quite so happy if I if, okay. I if I wasn't married to Mr. Bean. As talented as well, he I might don't be. Think that's what you're really going for, yeah. No, no, definitely not. So um She's actually looks like she's trying to set up the other camera to try recording raw footage. I am recording right now. Nice. Uh, got a question? Yeah. First off, can you see what we're doing again today? Because some people just joined. 
Okay, we are painting with M.E. Fuller, author and painter. Yes. She is from the southern part of Minnesota. We're up in the northern part of Minnesota, up in Duluth. So we're in like the ice box, I would call it. Although it's not as oh, bad as like Bemidji. Nice. <laughs> Bemidji would definitely kind of. Well, we're heading to Bemidji. Bemidji. Oh, you are? Yes. So we're just painting today and, and, and talking about her art career as an Arthur, author, not as an Arthur. You're not Arthur, but you're an I'm author. Not Arthur. She's, she's oh. written a couple of books. And she was also an extremely talented painter. So we're going to just kind so of paint the top. Painting, yeah. So I, as a, oh, that's right, I asked you a question. Today, today. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, a homey person. Uh, so <laughs> I was a, a graphic artist for my work career. Oh, you were? And art director. Ah. And uh, so what I had to unlearn. Was all that and Christian can appreciate this? All that bullet point noise yeah. that your clients want. So <laughs> deliver this message, get them to buy in four words or less. Yes. Right. No way to write a book. Yeah. And so when I discovered, and I always did like illustrated art. Oh no kidding. Yeah. But so now, what kind of media were you doing with it? Oh, that? acrylics and yeah. charcoal and oh, drawing okay. and watercolor. Uh, but when I discovered this whole gestural. Uh, you told me that you kind of ran across it. I, know, I, I did, it a bit, right? and it's so cool. Give a shout out to uh, Louise Fletcher. Who's that? Uh, Louise Fletcher, are you okay? Louise Fletcher, nice. You're not familiar with her? Oh, no, 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 no. Who wants to, who's having trouble releasing their inner painter. Oh, wow. She, uh, does, she has done um, a couple of uh, once a year free eight-day uh, painting courses. I think she's called Joy Painting. Well, anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. no, is that, is that... Uh, Not noble. Is that uh, our happy little tree guy that did Joy Painting? Bob no, Ross. No, Bob Ross. I, I think he did Stop that. with the Bob <laughs> I think it was Joy of Painting with him. No. Uh, yeah, well, he may have. But anyway, she, uh, look her up, Louise Fletcher. She well, really uh, enabled me to push this out of my system and it is really I believe what I was meant to do. It's just nice. so uh, so comfortable. And I'm more of a landscape artist and that's sort of I will do landscapes, uh, cityscapes, um, some of the pieces we didn't do because we were trying to get the technology up and running. Sorry guys. <laughs> we, we didn't have a chance to really show you but like some of the bigger eight foot pieces that you didn't see uh, they're back in the corner. Some of you that can check it out online, davidaustingallery.com. 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 And what's your website, by the way? mefullerart.com. mefullerwords.com. So you have, oh, you have the, the other ones for the, the authoring, authoring? The authoring? The authoring. I've got a question here about copyright collage with newspaper. Are you allowed to do it, or does it fall under somebody else's copyright? That is a really good question. Probably more appropriate for a, a copyright infringement attorney. But I tend to not use things that are somebody else's because um, I don't have a desire to. I guess um, Barbara Reed, and she's up in Toronto. She does quite a bit of collage with found stuff. But you should check her out on Instagram, particularly. And maybe she had an idea on that. Kristen, by the way, everybody, Kristen had to step out for a minute. She'll be back in a minute, so don't worry. If you have questions, hang on until she comes back. And then we'll just kind of paint the chat. But, oh, that's but I'll tell you, the, the copyright things are becoming, there's more protection for artists than there ever has been. Well, there's more and less, though. Like, you think do you get commissions? Do you have a thing in your contract that says includes NFTs and a commission on that? Oh, that's a good point. So I do. she brings up a, a very valid point about it. And I don't really do commissions anymore. I try not to. I I never I never like the stress of it. You know. Well, I, I do. Kristen and I were talking earlier about it's hard to have a client when you're oh, trying yeah. to paint freely. Yeah. Um, sure. So my thing is, if you want, if you like what I do, stretch. and you want something on the wall that I do, you tell me the size, I'll paint it. That's all you get out of me. <laughs> I will just create it. I didn't say it. I'm sure the question will come up. So this is reflex pink, neon pink from Amsterdam acrylic. 
thank you F Royal Talons North America for the awesomeness of the supplies. This was the blue, uh, bright blue, brilliant blue from them as well. What brand do you like to work with? Uh, well, I, I have to say, I, I don't, I live in rural Minnesota where we have an art stores. Yes. So, and I live in the budget. So I go with what I know, which is Golden product. Oh, and Golden's then, quite good, yeah. And then I discovered Maribel and fell in love. How did you, how'd you find Maribel? Um, probably watching endless YouTube videos like this one and seeing what other people use. Yeah. Just a pillow. Uh, uh, so I love these. A lot of, lot of people really like uh, those. Yeah, too. I do. And inks. Um, but anything that I've experimented with has really come from uh, watching YouTube videos and what other people use. And I. Marble, Marble makes a really good. Um, Marble makes a really good product. And we have several. Can I just ask that you two get a little closer to each other? I can't, we can't, can't work, work together. Can't, can't, can't. And you wearing the same thing. I, I will shim you over a little bit. Yeah, we'll oh, can't turn this. We'll, we'll shift over. Can't help, yeah. Apparently, it's a journey down the 80s. Yeah, I know. I, was, okay, I, was okay, I, I wasn't going to bother you for that yet, but eventually. Oh, it's bothering me. My heart rate, my, my watch literally says, keep up for the aerobics. And I'm like, I'm literally just standing here. Like, I got to reach for my, I'm going to slide out. my crap over here. I mean, my <laughs> artistic supplies. So the interesting thing, of those of you that are watching, so you may have noticed I scratched into the surface of the um, my initial layer with just the back of this uh, template paint stick and then I pulled some color over that and you can see how the parts that I scraped the, the, the new color that I scraped over ended up inside of that those marks that I made and I think that's really fascinating that you can add layers and then reveal layers as you go up it's just a lot of fun. all about the reveal these first layers are never anything it's what happens on top of them absolutely sure that makes a lot of sense so anyway, so we uh, where were we? I forgot where we were. I have no idea. I'm just that's how the show goes. Hey, I came up here just to meet you guys, and I'm glad I did. And beyond that, we'll get to the Well, we're happy you came. It was nice to. I did start to say that this is uh, kind of working from a sketch that I did. I did a bunch of sketches for the first point. Oh yeah, you did. So I have some small portable pieces for people. Yeah. Uh, but there were things that I really wanted to expand on. And uh, even though this will look nothing like that, and it's, a, it's a jumping off point. So reference material, always good. Yes. Well, that, that that's a good question. I mean, you, you do sketches then before no. you paint? Or no, just... this is the only time I did it. <laughs> I just didn't know what I was going to do when I got here. So. I never know what I'm doing for these shows. I always have a plan. There's always a plan. But it doesn't necessarily translate into anything. Oh yeah. I don't know if anybody uh, at home can do I that. I got a question for you. What medium are you working with right now? I'm working with uh, golden paints, gesso, and uh, I have, I don't know how to pronounce these strange, Benza Medazolone yellow medium, <laughs> and uh, pyro orange, burnt sienna, I'll get to raw umber, anacridone, gold, painting in white, and there will be a bunch of black added to this as these colors build. I just paint with whatever stuff I have to do laying around. Well, but you didn't have to. No, this is true. I know. I, I feel so bad for everybody that's coming because they're always having they're always having to put all this stuff in the car. Um, we actually have a new event coming up in Duluth. I don't know if I want to hear about this because I did hear from some people at uh, Park Point that it's a really good one to do the show, the Bayfront. Or... Oh, well, we've got that coming up. Yeah, oh. we're, we're in the Bayfront art show, which is going to be fun. Okay. Um, but then okay. we're just starting a plein air painting thing. Oh, I saw that. Every, uh, it'll be every, what is it? Every Wednesday, 10 a.m. in August. Yeah. And uh, different locales in downtown Duluth. Oh, different. Oh, that's My great. first one is at like 3 o'clock. 
And how did how, my my love? How how did we come across doing this again? Um, I came to back out of the thing, and then I made a new friend. Yeah, and so <laughs> she comes home after bowing out of one thing that we were supposed to do, and graciously because it wasn't a good thing, but. It wasn't a good fit. It wasn't a good fit. It was great. It's a great thing you're doing. Absolutely phenomenal. But anyway, so she comes in and says, hey, I volunteered you for something. Yeah. So that's how that came from me. So my question is, do you ever ask me first? No. <laughs> I don't. We have a, we have a, a relationship where I get away with that. Yeah, I, well, you know, I gotta trust well, my I partner. Think so, no. or, um, you know, if it's a monetary obligation, that might be a different thing. Yeah, I don't expect her to have. When it comes to marketing and, and things that she she's the one that needs to do that. I gotta trust her to do it. I don't know this technology stuff, and I don't want to. I just want to paint. Right? Yes, no. I'm so tired of after 35 years of having to do everything. I am so happy to just write books and paint pictures and hope somebody else will come in and uh, help support me. So, t so tell me about the, the books. You have two? I got two. Or so, well, so the first book, and you're new to this area, so this is something you want to check out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, fountain pen, fountain pen. <laughs> so the first book is... Um, Uh, it's called Saving the Ghost. Saving the Ghost? Yes, and it's a literary, it's my first novel. It's a literary piece, uh, really tough story about PTSD and a woman in her oh. late 50s who uh, confronts the realities of her childhood abuse when her father dies. And it's a story of how she processes through that. Oh, so, yeah, that's some heavy stuff. It is, uh, but I wrote it. Because uh, there are people who don't realize, I think, that uh, some of these injuries, you can come to a level of healing. Yes. And it's good to see a strong woman who's not a likable character. You're not going to like her. Uh, face everything. Take it on and then see how she comes out of it. Interesting. Yeah, so that was that. And that took seven years because I had to learn how to write a novel. Again, after bullet point writing for both first yeah. I had to learn how to uh, expand uh, content without making it boring. There's lots to learn. It's kind of like movies. Oh, yeah. If you can't see it move, the reader's not going to stay with you. So it was a lot to know. Um, so I did that. And then after that, I thought I needed to do something better. So not better, but totally different. So I tried comedy. Oh, did you really? And of course, I wouldn't just do a comedic book. I decided I'll do a series. So I, the first book, the series is called, I'm an avid gardener, so the series is called Filthy Dirty Garden Gloves. Oh, that's a great title. And the, uh, this first book is called Blood on the Bridal Week. Blood, blood on the what? Blood on the Bridal Week. Oh, wow, that sounds serious. So, no, it's not. Did you use okay. alcohol inks or something? Or is that why no, it's just really, really stinky paint. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize how bad that I got. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been keep that in mind right there. I wash my brushes. Well, that wasn't the brushes, oh. the, but they get washed eventually. Okay. About once a week, every other week. Um, that was some paint that was left over from a little while ago and hadn't stunk yet. I got rid of most of the rest of it and used it up. But this one's real stinky. Just so you know, it's really disgusting, guys. <laughs> it is bad. It's a sulfur factory. Yeah. It's the big old pay was. Uh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> the screen tea I, that you got me really is nice. Yeah, you thought it was going to be bad with that baby grogu on it. But... I really thought it was going to be the worst tea ever. Why? <laughs> it, well, it's, I don't know. The, I actually don't know the brand. Republic of Tea. Republic of Tea. Which is, they make good tea. But um, they have a baby Yoda canister. It's not baby Yoda, it's, it's Grogu. Grogu. That's Someone's going to crack us otherwise. <laughs> okay, so now, so, more, I have this in here. So, so, where do we have people from today, Kristen? Yeah. I don't know. You don't know? You can't see? Nobody said. Nobody said. Where's everybody from today? 
Tough shout out and let us know where you're from. So anyway, you you are were saying the book. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's just it's <clears throat> it's a cozy mystery series, which means uh, with a cozy mystery, it's not going to keep you up at night. It's not going to scare the pants off of you. It's not excessive blood, gore, sex, any of that. Oh. But mine is a little spicier than a, than a regular, uh, and it's about a fictional group of uh, garden club members in the fictional town of Buffalo View Village. But getting back to the first book, I thought I to mention. So oh, okay. the book itself is fiction. People say, "Is that your? Uh, is that a memoir?" It's like, "No, it's not a memoir." But the place where it happens is. Um, Based on a small railroad town out in the woods, uh, just west of Two Harbors. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Yeah, it's around Gibson, this area. Where it turns That's out, true. my family on my father's side uh, came from Ireland to Ontario and into Two Harbors and uh, built a lot of family there. Wow. And it's still standing. No way, really? Yeah. Oh, so cool. I will be writing another book about. Yeah, because again, I mentioned the Michigan where my mother yeah. uh, was, she was adopted, so finding her family discovered that they're all Michigan. Most of them. So that book's good. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You, you mentioned oh. that. And some of it was from, was Kalamazoo? You mentioned Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo, a uh, little town called Menden, Michigan. London? say that we actually have not gotten down to um, anywhere south of the <laughs> farthest so far. Well, that's you know, right now, we got enough to do. Yeah. The state's not going anywhere, as far as I know. Well, I don't think so either. And we picked the best spot to move to, well, according to uh, all, well, not me, according to all climate forecasters, this is the place to live. So. <laughs> Contrast going on. Oh, I'm really excited. Oh, yeah, I like the contrast a lot. I've made a big wet mess over here on this stuff. It's really saturated today. Yeah, <laughs> so I always take towels for that. Well, I, I sometimes I'll let it sit and uh, move on to the next canvases, is what I do a lot of times. But I'm not going to work out. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. But it, anyway, it's a small space yeah. to work in, so I'm. It's cozy. We're cozy enough to We're very the cozy. art. Cozy to the art We're today cozy. on the show. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to get one of your two books, where would they go? They just go to my website, aim for words.com, or they go to Amazon. Uh, if they go to my website, they get a link yeah. to Amazon, or they can order a signed copy, and I'll ship it to you personally. Nice. Yeah, no, but that personal touch. Um, yeah, and then this fall, I'll be working on the second of the cozy mystery. So I had the uh, pass on a big uh, Hackensack, Minnesota, another place you don't know anything about. Uh, really. North Woods Arts Council has an annual arts and book festival. And uh, I had a used to go and they had a building of like 30 or more authors. Wow. And people love building the book. Plus great artists present as well. 
outside. Yes. Um, but I had to cancel it this year because my people were out there instead. And you know, and I get to the end of coming up and it's like that's just like Oh. Like you say, a lot going on. You really yeah, do. I, I do too. What, what is your, Keith, what do you do? Do you just kind of follow along or give her moral support? Um, yes, we work. Are you, she puts you to work? I retired. I retired? I retired last year. And you're working harder than ever, keeping yeah. up with her. Well, I went nuts over the winter, and so I yeah. went back to work. I got a full time job now. Are you really? Yeah. terrible. Some people can't. You got to have it. They got to do a job. Yeah, oh, this this is definitely a job for me. I'll tell you what. Right. Yeah, but I understand that. It's uh, particularly if you came from a workforce for so many years. I've known several others that have had trouble settling into you know new to, to a new retired sort of, sort of non-activity or trying to figure well, out an activity. Remember that neighbor we had? We had that heart attack a week after. Oh yeah. And then went back to work because it, it stressed yeah. him out being home all the time. Well, it's. If you're not self-directed, it's not even a social thing necessarily, although for, I think for some people it is. But if you're not self-directed, retirement is not going to be the same. Yeah, so it's not, she's using thicker paint over here, uh, mixing it, mixing her colors, and just responding very improv improvisationally, I think, right? Now. Pretty much now, because yeah, well, I'm making you do it. No, I just I'm at that point now where I need to kind of look at my space and see what gets dark and then we'll of course come back in and make changes yes. and that's what happens there. That makes perfect sense. It does to you. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anybody out there who is afraid to start painting? Oh, that's a good question. Anyone afraid of painting or creating in general? Because somebody might look at your work and say something and you want yeah. to hear. <laughs> We we have our our favorite saying is the hashtag create without fear. Use it when you post everybody. It, it's, we always talk about working through those fears and using those different kinds of techniques for yourself on how you get past it. And that applies to anything new for anybody. Right. You know, learning a new learning new technology like back here. I had to learn these lights because Christian was struggling with the cameras. I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I could push a button and turn them on. No, they don't do things like that anymore. That's you know. <laughs> Then you have now reached an age where you say, in the old days. In the, back in the old days, days, we didn't have such things. We just pushed a button and it went on. That's right. Now we got to, you know, read a whole thing about Bluetooth connectivity and slaving one light to the next and masters and and <laughs> colors and, and, and Calvins and all these fancy. I don't know what I'm doing. So, yeah, it was uh, interesting. But, you know, it's, I think it's good to challenge yourself like that. Well, I have to. I, I'm i not a very good sit still person. No. I had no idea. So, what, I have to wait for this road to make it over. Um, you want another can? You want a cheap canvas to make No, no. I, I got those cheap ones, so you'll see you mess around. No. 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 <laughs> As I said to Keith earlier this morning, I told my own mind. Oh, thank you. Uh, this I, is really fun. I, I have to say, I was that. kind of dreading it because I never, I paint in my studio yes. with no one around ever. Well, now you have thousands of people. And, oh, do I have thousands? Oh, How right many do we have? have? Four, five? Huh? What? Watching right now? Yeah. Uh, we've had 1,400 people go through the year. They come and go, you know, and I don't blame them. I, I, I do the same thing when I'm. Well, I made a point of watching some of your videos, so I knew what to expect. Oh, I appreciate that. That was a thing. I love it. I had intended to uh, like do uh, artist interviews. Yes. So I bought some equipment. Oh, you were gonna, you were thinking of kind Not of. Not like this. <laughs> and oh, then okay. I realized I don't have time. That, it is a time. I don't have. Well, that's kind Kristen. of how Kristen doesn't have oh, yeah. Kristen's not at my house. Not everybody so. has a Kristen in no. their house. This is this is an <laughs> ongoing indeed. discussion. And that's where you end up having to hire somebody and so forth. Right. And it's not fun no. to pay people to do something that may or may not return on investment. Arts administrators, good arts administrators are worth their weight in gold. Oh yeah. I mean I, I don't oh, know. Uh, yeah. Oh yes I do, but she's not a yeah. Well, and that's often the case. <laughs> so 
bless you any arts administrators out there know that yeah. you're appreciated very much so we used to employ a few of them as interns no, I'm with them. i know i'm there just they, getting a little jealous real soft there goes love them so these are art crayons and there's a couple different brands you can get. Marabou is kind of the name brand. Is it? But there, there's other brands too. If you look, do a surf, but you surf guys see brands, all the colors. There's a lot of colors. If you like color, there's, can you see those colors? That's I burned through, I burned through certain ones really fast. And you know, actually, what I like is the the white. I like doing the white one a lot. I know. It has a blender. Well, there is a blender. A, I know, but I, the oh. white with like with the mixed media stuff. You know, yeah, like oh, sure, sure, sure. So it's just a way to blend the thing. It's really cool. And then the, these guys here have white too, but I go through these super fast. The black ones and the white ones. I have to try those. Those are good. You gotta try it. Uh, you should take one of these. I'll show you how to talk about it. I was wondering about it. A print mono print is a lot of fun. She's suggesting that I take and do a mono print off of one of these. Try it. Move me on those two canvases. Okay, I can't find it. So I find always it. make oh, sure. Oh, I told you that was going to happen. That's all right. Why is it a big white place? I don't no, know. That's, that's tough. This just would not be the show. That's right. What? It's all about the fun. <laughs> sure. Okay, so this is the crash, the bang. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, these are beautiful. Now, yeah, you said these don't have a sheen to them, yes? A little bit of a sheen, yeah. So if you wanted to use, like, um, over the top of it, Sometimes your your markers might have issue adhering. Uh, some other kinds of things might have a little bit of problem, but that it's worth it's worth that. It's really. It's worth uh, I would that. imagine you could put a fixative on the top. And yes, and so I'll use the Degas fixative on the top of those, okay. like we were talking about. Yes. You you also got into that. Yes, thank you. And my new shipment should be here. Gallons and gallons of Degas oh, fixative yeah. and final fix. Final fix is the other. Oh, what do you about that? Well, so the guy fix it when you put it on, you want to layer very thinly and leave this your guy. piece flat. Yeah, that's in that. Yeah. Now, I suggest getting the spray for the really expensive bottle at some point. If you're doing stuff in charcoal or pastels or water media, what, uh, because the other spray bottle that it comes in a standard form will splatter a little. So it's a bigger atom that hits it and it can it can actually create some, some dapping. Yeah, oh. yeah. Are yeah. there any good rules of thumb when it comes to layering colors, i.e., should smaller markings and details be more on top or below? You want to cover you know what, it first no, and then I'll be Should smaller details be on top or below? Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. Go back to what David said earlier about uh, layering. So all this color that I'm putting back here, much of it's going to get covered up. Some of this I like texturizing, so some of it's going to get scraped away. And then I might come back and build some small spaces with more color. So it's just a process of do this, do that, do something else, come back uh, until you have the effect that you want. Yeah. Well, the point is, when you're working wet into wet, you can scrape the layer down. And then some people even sand a layer down, but I don't necessarily recommend that with the... the with the acrylics because the acrylics are basically a polymer, a plastic, and you don't want to inhale that plastic and so forth, the microplastics. But uh, you, when it's wet like this, you can scrape the layer down into the next zone. You know, there's no reason you can't do that. Oh, and there we come right down through it again, right? And you pick up some of the other details. And you saw earlier, I was doing some of that and you're dealing with previous layers. And then she, she's also using towels. You yeah, can I want use... to show here that I just sprayed this with water. The stuff that I just scraped with a handy dandy scraper is not going to hurt like this guy. She's already and losing then, my piece of equipment. Oh, okay. Just good nature ribbon. You know, go through here, pick yeah, up some cool. color, and then I might even go in either with my hand or with the towel and start to blend some things. And this is how I generally find the landscape painting I'm looking for. Because there's all kinds of the more natural effects that you get from just painting brand. Nice. Right? Nicely said. There's a lot of techniques you can use, and, and you'll find a lot of videos. You'll find a lot of videos on our various platforms about technique specific uh, projects, too. Uh, the reels often, the shorts will often address that as well. 
And there are so many great people that she mentioned, the, the person out of um, uh, England that you mentioned. And Lewis Noble's another one. He does a lot of scraping. He works on wood panels. I can't stand the noise. Oh, yeah. I tried it. It's like, Did you? love the effect, but I couldn't, couldn't tolerate it. And you can see we use a lot of wood panels here. <laughs> yeah, so that's how you get, you can see the difference between all of this energetic color and now there's something more subtle going on. So if you want this to dry, you can come in and work with some of these details if you want. Or, as often happens in my studio, when it's dry, out comes the gas salt and it turns white again. <laughs> Depending on how I'm going with it. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, there whitening it out and starting over. That no. goes back to don't be afraid. Um, particularly, I think, particularly in early stages when you start painting, did you find that you um, had to really focus on not being so object oriented and you just needed to work on your techniques? Well, it wasn't technique for me. It was, um, as I said before, <clears throat> because I did client work for so long, oh, I was yeah. getting out of all the rules of what someone else had wanted else wanted and that's where Louise Fletcher helped me her I took her eight week free course and four of those are conversational they're uh online but then there are four assignments <laughs> all of the work I did in the first three classes is in trash that will be used for my at some point it was the fourth lesson that let me explode and that's what I was looking for so how, how far in was that lesson how many weeks that was a year ago but I mean, how, how long did, were you doing the lessons before it kind of triggered for you? There were three of them. Three there were four of them. It was the last one. So how, how long per lesson? Oh, it's just a piece of paper with instructions. Do this, do this, do this, do okay. this, do this. So over the course of, say, two weeks or something, you got through the three lessons? Over the one? course of eight days. Eight days? Well, they were, wow, that's they impressive. were in a class and a discussion. Yeah. Class and a, or a, or an assignment. So I just did the assignments, like discussions, like people. Interesting. Um, and yeah. So I'm going to do a model print like she suggested. But I already knew how to paint. I mean, I already painted for years. I just didn't give it out of me uh, like this. So now we're model printing. I want to I well, didn't put a lot of paint on there, but I wanted to have a variation to play with. Too. So I'm going to do this. There was so much going on. Oh, always. Yeah. That's later as it dries, you know, I might go out and block some of it out. So we got some. Oh my God, look at that. That's kind of fun. It's a blue honor. Blue honor, yeah. Over there, maybe? No, right there. Right. It, it's all in how somebody makes that. It's that's always. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Good job. So yeah, I did uh, techniques. It's all an experiment. Every time I paint, I find something new. Ah. So I don't uh, don't worry about uh, doing it right. And that that's why I do some of the questions here, the conversations, because people are always incessantly asking, "Is this wrong?" But I took it wrong. Like, there was no wrong. No wrong. That's right. And we cannot seem to convince ourselves that there's this wrong that we're doing. That's not bad. Yeah. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Actually. So, what what is if you don't like it? That's why God made you so. <laughs> right? You just cut it up. Yes. Uh, but I have noticed with my paintings, uh, someone had said to me, "I can't stand it when artists don't title their paintings." <laughs> so I named everything. You know, really? when I was done, it's like, "Oh, I get what one is. I get it. And this is what the title is." And other people say, "Well, that's not my hair." It's like, "Fine." When you buy the painting, you can get it. And we've had that happen. We have a collector right now oh, yeah. that's yeah. bought two of the new series, the figure series. He named them. Yeah. He named them because they weren't named yet. But he came in. He was coming in to buy something completely different, of and he course. saw them on the side. Yep. And went, I must have her. Okay. And uh, and oh, and yeah. he's an amazing. We, we thoroughly enjoy talking to him. Highly, highly intelligent person. We like intelligent people. We're okay with people not so intelligent. We like everybody. <laughs> Oh, it's a in this house. <laughs> anyway, so he's he he got some stuff that was good. I forgot where I was going with stuff. So, yeah, that's right. It's, it's, that's how it goes. It's, it's one of my skills. Most distraction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People looking at your work. Um, 
um, there, there was a funny thing that happened to me. Not funny, but interesting. Again, Odom, Minnesota, southwest corner, from the South Dakota border. Where you are. Back on on. That's yeah. where I live. Moved there intentionally. So every one of these little towns, and I'm sure this is true across the country, has some sort of summer festival week. Oh yeah, we all do. Right, so my video has Fiesta Days. And uh, so Fiesta Days came around, I had been there for six months, I think, kind of like you guys. Oh wow. And so I decided I to get a booth at the local fair with the Heritage mm -hmm. World War event. It's kind of what we did here with the park point. Well, it's this is here. like, you know, here's a free table, we'll see if we can sell some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, quite the same. Not quite the same. No. Um, but the local paper, I had been in conversations with the local uh, reporter, who's now the editor, uh, came over and took pictures of these new pieces, these little on uh, 300 pound watercolor paper uh, abstracts that I did. And somehow society wasn't about this stuff. And so she had an article, she printed them on the paper, because the public in Texas. He was originally a child from Watson, which is a town like about 15 miles from us. They came in and they, they would have bought everything, but I said, I only have some things. <laughs> That's all I have. So they took all that and they have continued to purchase from me and follow on Instagram. Oh, that is awesome. Right away, would somebody please tell me where artists can go? Because Instagram is really going to be dragged with all the ads and the things that I want to see. Yeah. Where is a good place for artists to show up and see other people's work? Well, that's a good question. I mean, Instagram is still not, is still one of the better platforms to work with. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're going to say that, especially since we're live on Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> I just, I mean, it's really hard. I only really have so many minutes in a day. Yes, this is a good question. And we, we get this a lot too. Um, I can tell you that we, we use several platforms right now. Yeah, uh, but it's whatever one you're most comfortable on, you're going to excel. In. Uh, it's like we started with Instagram, and that's one of the reasons that one excels for us. But Kristen's been building. Excel? Well, it's just it, it, we have the most followers, we've had the most luck with the sales and so forth. Oh, okay. But it's changed a lot, it's evolved a lot over yeah. the years. Yeah, I mean, you're so new to it, but I don't you know. Just it's like everything I go to, it's constant ads. Yeah, oh, it doesn't matter almost where you're going anymore. Oh, that's the problem. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. not my goal. I'm not going to be hurt surprised to sponsor an arena for us online. Well, I will we say that. that. No, no, no. We tried that. Remember? Nobody would come over and join us. Oh, really? actually really aggravating. Oh, that is so sad. Finding people to accept a new platform and add another thing to their day is a really big ask. It's a hard one. I mean, look at you, you said it yourself. I mean, it's hard. It's hard as artists to commit another, another time for more social media. But some of these people, like, you know, Betty. Franks and and, yes. and Barbara and, and several of the others that I'm just rattling a few off. They're on like we are multiple platforms because you're hedging your bet. Well, I'm telling you where they are for me and maybe for you guys. The best place to go if you want to see what people are doing is YouTube because you can make a select. YouTube is good. Thank you, YouTube. People, <laughs> people they're over there. YouTube's in that one. So uh, because you can select what you want to see if there's a lot of problems and through it. And people do so many demonstrations. That is actually what attracted me to um, Louise Fletcher. Was her early uh, her early videos are all like a shot over the shoulder, so you can yep. actually see her working. I just it was amazing to me. So that's what I look for for that. So I got another start going because that's how I go. Anybody that's followed us, we, we I have multiple paintings going. There's multiple going on in the studio right now. Um, do, you, do you work with multiple pieces going at the same time? I have um, on paper. Like I'll, I'll divide up a big sheet of, of heavy watercolor paper. I'll divide up into six pieces and then I will work across that space. Across that. Um, but again, I don't have, I don't have this kind of room. I'm we're very we're very blessed. Yeah, I'm not complaining. I have good studio space, but uh, we we totally recognize how fortunate we are. So now some some artists just do you know they'll focus on a piece for however many months. Well, and then yeah, no, 
uh, some things come out of me so fast, I'm sure you have that experience too, you can't even believe that that happened overnight. Yeah. In other cases, take time to live with them because you gotta have a mind in a place that can receive what you're seeing. Yeah, that's true, for sure. Anything that you do, I, I learned this in writing, uh, if you wrote it, if you painted it, you meant it to be there. So figure it out. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's sometimes how I look at painting. Okay, it's here. Why? Or just home. <laughs> so what is your favorite thing right now? Is it the writing or the painting or do they kind I don't of have form? A I do not have a favorite. I love, love, love to tell stories. And get in one of the places where your work differs from mine uh -huh. is when this is done, <laughs> there will be a story in here. You know, it'll be like a summer thunderstorm in the garden, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there'll be something here that tells a story. Yeah, I might have to differ with you on that one because from the standpoint that many of my works are, are very narrative. -oriented. That's good to know. I would yeah, um, I'll give you an example of which one do we have right now up here. There's stiff through Barry right now, but um, many of the pieces that I'm doing are dealing with uh, like society built on another society. Oh. and how the humans are interacting with each other, how one culture can absorb or destroy another culture. So there's archaeological references too. So yeah, for example, the one way back to Greenland, yeah, the big yeah, four yeah. by eight, really like if you look at the, uh, the structures in there and the different layers of the cities, yep. sometimes it's almost like an archaeological dig, like dig. because okay. you're digging through these yeah. different societies. Um, so there, okay. there is that. Okay. And, but, it's a different story. It's a different kind of story, yeah. Every, every painting does have a narrative. Um, it just depends on what what you're going to make out of it. Like it's a subjective experience. It really because is. Because you're bringing and your experiences to that, I'm bringing mine to it, you know. And someone, out of the many things that I've listened to and read and studied, um, one of the statements and a paraphrase was uh, that abstract work is, is intended to evoke a response. Yes. As absolutely. opposed to defining something. And that's how I feel about this. And it, it, it is the same process with writing. You know, how do you deliver your language? Uh, if it doesn't evoke something from your reader, they're not going to stay with you. This is also true. So, yeah. Yeah, so you're also a writer, writing coach too, aren't you? I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a writing coach. See, only it's okay. I've got your car right there, right? Only in that I call myself an encourager. But I feel like everybody has a story to tell. And most people have been told, truly, throughout their lives that, well, you're, you're not important, that story is no good, you don't know how to oh, write, okay. you don't know how to do I hate to see that. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you don't have to be uh, a great master, I'm certainly not, but you can still tell a story. So if I can help people to establish a writing practice, that's what I'm after. I don't want to tell you what to write or how to do it, I'm going to follow that. But I can help you establish practice. It's a same yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because that's one of the, the ongoing things that we have addressed is some people have gone through, like Kristen got really bad um, teachers for a while that yeah. quashed, just quashed her creative and, and her spirit. And we've that's always why encouraged. I can't count. I have is there really? Yeah, I have four great teachers with the Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> There's, there's a story there, I suspect. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Just, yeah. One and done, right? Yeah. Really, it's over. I can't do it now. But anyway, so yeah, yeah. But yeah, it doesn't it's... matter how you are received, what you hear back. I mean, I remember being probably seven years old and Christmas was coming and I was in my room. I'm sure my tongue was hanging out of my mouth like the kids were busy. Coming yeah, for sure. Time. Yeah. And I was making pictures of the four seasons. And when I was done, I threw them away because I knew it, I believed it would not be valued. Uh oh. Right? And it's just, like, do not terrible. do that. Don't do that you don't to yourself. Know. Don't, do that you don't to know yourself. what you don't know. And if that person doesn't value you, someone else will. Yeah, somebody will. And that, that's the hard part, you know. We, we, I know we're going to have a lot of discussions about the art business afterwards. We, yes. <laughs> yes. We just didn't have enough time to cover a lot of that stuff in the show here today. But, Maybe we can do another show with him on that later. So that's really nice. I like this technique she's doing right now, which is adding some gesso over the top of it, I think. That's titanium white. Yeah. Titanium white. 
and then uh, working it through and, and blending it. It's giving like a little bit of a patina, but it's also allowing part of the background to recede or come forward because she's creating more contrast. And a lot of, I think, successful paintings involve that. However, there is the stuff, the color field painting, the all over paintings that various people have done and, and so forth that are very successful too. So don't limit yourself. I don't I don't think you should ever limit yourself. No. 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 If you're in a direction when you're working, just keep going that direction. Well, so you're like this is unusual for me. I'm a big blender. And I'm because I'm here, and I think it's because I'm getting your energy. <laughs> I'm letting my miracle I'm a little bit ca contagious on that one. And that's not bad. It's a good thing. But I'm letting the um, miracle color stand for now and uh, seeing if I can't blend a little more. Nice. While still allowing that, stay so like in here. I yeah, like I like that. that. Oh, that's nice. Like that. yeah. yeah. So you just work it until it's done. Work it till it's done. Until you like it. That's a uh, big question for us on, on here, too, is how do you know when it's done? You do. You just know. It's like a book. I think there's a level of experience, though, of working before that really comes to true, you know. For yeah. People, yeah, I think a lot of people, and even I did struggle still sometimes, you know, if it's done or not. Yeah, but I you're, you're, you, you know what it is? is <laughs> so it speaks really I mean, look, clearly for is, you. See, this is looking now to me, except it's not blue, but who cares? This is looking like your rock pond. Oh, the pond out there, yeah. Right? Our, our little pond that we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. So happy the so. way that's growing in. You're talking about gardening. We, we, we left a massive garden at our Did old you? place. Yeah. Oh, really? we, we had an acre at the old house and half of it was gardens and ponds. It was just, it was incredible. But we're starting over here and it's, and it's a lot of fun. I, we're enjoying you know, it. And speaking of Johnny for the moment, I am done with this painting. I see there are things to do, but right now I need to let it rest. You just got to let it rest. Oh, we already hit the 55 minute mark. Oh. Look at that. I need to show it this way. Yeah, I can flip it around. Like I said, there's more. 360 degree. Enjoy. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, so now so will you let it sit and then go back and look at it again? Well, bit? yes, because we are going from here to uh, Bemidji, Minnesota, to mm -hmm. talk to uh, the curator, I believe, at the Watermark Art Center to establish dates for a solo show for 2023. Whoa, nice. If you've never been to the Watermark Art Center, it is beautiful. That is awesome. Their galleries are beautiful. I'm so excited. So we're going to talk about that. With so the, this will be driving around in the car, hopefully, <laughs> not, you know, hopefully not painting itself on the way. But I'm really happy about this. I feel very excited about it. But so what parts uh, are appealing to you specifically? What can you explain? Kind of, I you, you made a decision, said it's done right now, and, and for and, now, for now, right? I get that. I stay, can't, stay in I the like picture. All of this. Yeah, stay over here. Right. Stay, stay a little bit in the picture. Yeah. I like all she of keeps this going stuff. off. I watch you, Kristen, swiveling. <laughs> the director says, Move into the center of camera. Yeah, so I like this because yeah. I like this is what I do generally is work this stuff up until it becomes some landscape. Mm -hmm. But because I think I was inspired by the time, yeah, I can I'm see that. I'm liking all this excitement. It's almost like water tumbling and the plants it touching is. into it, and we got the, the dark rocks, the dark blue rocks that are there. Yeah, you can see that. Right so, there. you know, and then there's water spraying, yada yada. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how it feels right now, and right now I can go either way. Um, I, like, I like what you did. I really have enjoyed painting with you a lot today. High five, buddy. Yeah, right <laughs> It's fun, yeah, yeah. So, to, so, to review, what's your websites again? Tell us your websites. Oh, AmyFullerArt.com. And only for words with an S. Nice. Yes, Thank and I so also, much. I should also mention something I forgot. Oh, please do. I do writing workshops. So if you go on the words, uh, any for words uh, website, if you're interested in writing, um, I especially I do a closing mystery, how to write a closing mystery and anything else workshop, which is meant to be fun. So you can not be afraid of writing. It's Create fun. without fear. Yes, there's a no test. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a bunch of others for more experienced writers as well. So thank you for inviting me. I'm so glad that you at that part point. 
Yeah, me too. It was good, good to see them. So They're just fun. Yeah, this will be a long process. Um, I just drying and then working as it dries and continue to work afterwards. Yeah, I'll, I'm kind of either I'll go real simple or I'm, I guess I'm coining the term or Kristen coined the term maximalist. I didn't coin the term. So it just exists. I, I accused you. Or maybe it'll stop. Was. It may stop. But it, it's like her. I'm going to take a look at it, let it dry, come back, and then uh, see where we are with it. But we appreciate you so much. You drove a long way. Well, we did. That. But, you know, when I met you, and I, I Chris and I talked a little bit too uh, earlier, um, I like the corporate energy. I'm at an age in my life where if you're cranky, I have enough cranky for all of us, so don't bother me with it. And one, of, one of the things I recognized from you when we, when we first met, and I thought, I think it's cool. You know, it's kind of the artist that's got a little bit of that edge going on. It's a good thing. Well, it, it's who you you have to be who you are. You start just yes. like that, and I mean, you could be polite. That yeah. that's acceptable. Polite but, is good, but to a point, you know, if it compromises who you are, you need to just move out of the room. I think you should right? say it. Yeah. Yeah. And say it with your paintings. Yeah. If you yeah, need a yeah. if you need a voice, say it with your paintings or your art or your books. Or your books. Yeah. I Thank you so much for coming again. I appreciate all of you coming and visiting us at the show. We do this every Saturday at roughly 10.30 a.m. We're a little late today. Uh, we're, we've added new equipment, and we're still learning equipment, new cameras and lights and things. It's so exciting right now. We have the Bayfront show coming up at, uh, in August. We have uh, the ARDT gallery is at the Ham or what is it, the Art, Art Market Hamptons is coming up in August as well. So they're gonna be wrapping some of the big five foot pieces that I, I sent them. They have 15 pieces. So that's pretty exciting. And we're a big shout out to you guys, Jim and Candy. Thank you so much for that. Come back in here, what are you doing? I'm back. You, I'm can't, you can't go off screen. And we appreciate our guest today. Yes. Emmy Fuller is and here in it. the house. <laughs> Remember, create without fear, davidaustingallery.com. And if you're interested in our clothing line, muddypaw.net, get outdoors. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank and we'll you. see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. So we just, but I, I'm having fun with it.